Okay, good afternoon again. This is Mr. McGee, and today we're going to look at our data results from our osmosis lab that we did the other day. To start off, how can we make sense of this data? You can see on this side, this is probably referring to our molarity, if you remember the amount of grams of salt dissolved in water, and these are the results from the different groups. Now, because of the schedule, I only had a total of two classes, so this is my 3x class, and this would be my 4y class. This is your results as you pretty much gave me. I didn't adjust these in any way, shape, or form. So if that's the case, let's go ahead and uh, make sense of this. And the first thing we should do is we should make some grid lines. Highlight the whole thing and go up here, and this will make us some grid lines so we can actually make sense of this data. But now we want to add a little title to this, and that's not going to be easy to do unless we add a little title to up on the top and up on the side. So what we're going to do is just kind of click on a top cell and right click. And then we're going to go here to insert row. And by doing that, it puts a row on top. And then we're going to go to one of these side cells and click insert column. Now we've got a place to put a little heading there. So what I'm going to do now is right above these cells here, because this is again referring to my entire dependent variable. What I'm going to do is just kind of click on one spot here and I'm going to put the title. Now to save time, I've already put it here. This is referring to my average change in mass. You want to type that out right on the top up there. And then off to the side, this is going to be our salinity, or in this case, our salinity in grams per 100 milliliters. Now notice it doesn't fit in there very well, and that is going to require you to do a couple things. One of them is you could just expand it out like this, or you could just kind of do something like this. Bring it to these cells right there that you want it to go, uh, that you want it to go in and you can click this merge cell option and then you just kind of go to vertically align like this and if it doesn't work like that you go to wrap around and then you, of course you want to center it you can do it like this and honestly i think it looks nicer that way but you can do it as you wish on this this one we want to get centered nice and center over all of these ones here so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of highlight these cells and we'll do this extra one here i'll show you why in a minute and we're going to go up here to merge just like this and then center and that way it's right in the center of all of these groups now if you look at our data these are kind of like trials we're going to probably want to have a mean which is an average of all our groups and while we're at it we probably want to make everything nice and centered let's go ahead and do that nice and centered just like that and just like last time in class we also want to have a nice little border shading. That way we can tell what is actually being used here. So what we're going to do is make sure you add a little shade to this. I'm going to highlight these cells over here for my independent variable. And we're going to go ahead and add a background color. And you can use whatever color you want. Again, I'm not really picky on that. But I want your eyes to be able to distinguish our independent variable from our dependent variable, which is, our, um, which is basically our x and our y-axis on our graph. Okay, this cell didn't have to be like this. Honestly, we can get rid of that little border if that's kind of getting picky there. Um, let's see, we make sure we give it a, we'll get rid of the entire thing by clicking on this and then I'm gonna give it a bottom and then I'll give it a side. That way it looks just kind of like that. And it looks a whole heck of a lot better. And let's give this one here a full border and then we'll give this top one here a full border too. That way these ones don't look kind of doofy and I guess I probably need to add a border to these ones as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And other than that, the data looks nice. We're almost done with our table, but for one other little problem. You see the decimal points are off? We need to make sure all decimal points are the same. And in this case, we had a precision on our measuring instrument of two decimal places. All of these, despite what numbers you gave me, they can't be rounded to the whole number and they need to be instead rounded to the hundredth of a gram, just like this. All of them are like that. And uh, well, I think with that said, we can go ahead and get started. Now we need to go ahead and calculate our mean. Shrink that over just a tad bit there. In order to calculate the mean, you do the following. Type this in, in your key on your keyboard. You hit equals, and then you type average. Whoops. Once you type in average, you hit enter. So that's equals average. And then you highlight just the raw data in a particular row. Notice I did it just like that. And then I can click enter. Do the same for each cell. And then you just highlight the raw data. 
just like that. Oops. Oh, it's because I'm not clicking enter. Click enter, otherwise it won't let you do that. Another little trick you can do is once you calculate one, you can just copy that cell and paste it because this is actually an equation. And so when you do it for each row, it changes. But uh, there we go. We got it done for each row. Our table looks very nice. You can space things a little more if you want to change the size in that. But other than that, let's go ahead and copy this and paste it in our report. You're going to go on the report that I gave you earlier and go ahead and go up here to copy. And let's open our report. This is your template. And then you go down here to paste it. And ideally, you'd paste it without formatting. And you can just kind of paste it unlinked. I'm not sure what it does to do all that. Here's the problem. Notice it's really squashed together like this. You can do a couple things to fix it. You can kind of work with these lines like this, or that's not going to work. Or let's see if that paste, that paste with formatting will work. It might not work in that sense here. Let's try paste without formatting. Nope, that's not going to work. What options do we have? Well, I'm glad you asked that. There's a couple options. One of them, like I said, is play with that. Or to get it to fit, you can always do this. Now on MacBooks, you might not have this option, but on Windows, we have what is called a snipping tool. It's called the snipping tool. And you just kind of come over to the top over here on the sides, and then you just kind of crop the stuff you want like this and then you just basically copy it and you can paste it right into your lab report like this. And it's basically just pasted as a picture and you can of course expand it as desired and move it over and get it centered and all that. Okay, there's several ways to do it. You might have to play around with which method of copying and pasting works, but let's move on to the graph. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out so you can see this a little better. Let's go down to maybe 75% or let's do 90% here. Maybe you can see that a little better. What we're going to do is tell our computer that we want our x-axis to be this. Highlight your independent variable, the 0 through the 4 for salinity. And now you're going to have to hold control. Click control and now highlight your mean. This is your dependent variable or your y-axis. And we've now told the computer this is the horizontal x-axis. This is our horizontal or our vertical y-axis. And again, to do that, you click and drag, then you hold control, and then you highlight this. Be careful not to get the titles in there. And then you just go up here to insert chart. And if you notice, when I go to scatter plot, we produce this as a byproduct. That's not producing the way I wanted it to. All right, so I apologize. I'm not sure why it's not working the way I want it to. It's a uh, in the past when I've tried it, it's done different things and I'm still learning Google Sheets. It's definitely got a lot less options than Microsoft Excel does, which I'm more familiar with. So let's try this instead. Highlight this column zero through the four. And I don't know why this is gonna work, but if you go up here to insert chart and you get a little graph like this, but that's not what we want. So here's where you gotta be careful. We're gonna manually go over here now and tell it X axis. We're gonna now again tell it to use this as the x-axis. Just highlight that and hit OK. And now we're going to go over here to the series, double click on what it already is. And I think that's the problem is I think Google Sheets is just assuming what it thinks your graph is, probably because it's meant for simpler graphs than what we're using. But then click on series and go over here to mean and just pick the mean data. Don't pick anything else. It seems to work when I do that, but I don't know why when I do it on different graphs it works differently. The graph looks fine now, so what you're going to do is go up here to column chart. And we don't want a column, we want a scatter plot. So we'll just click it like that and be done with it. This is your scatter plot. Notice it is in a downward trend, and it looks fine, except we need to add a few things, such as labels and that. What we're going to do is go over here to customize, and we are going to go to, uh, uh, first we need to add some titles. So we're going to go over here to horizontal axis title. And in this case, you're going to want it to be pretty much exactly what it says up at the top here. So, or I'm sorry, horizontal axis title would be salinity here. So what we're going to do here is say salinity. Okay, and we'll say grams per 100 liters of water. Okay, 
and notice it puts the, act, the title right underneath that axis there. And then what we're going to do is go back here to titles and change it to vertical. And we're going to tell this the average change in mass. And of course our unit is grams on that one. Now you might want to make these a little bigger if you have trouble seeing it. You can go over here to auto font or change the font size to make that bigger or not. I'll let you guys play with that if you want to make it bold or not. Again, I'll let you decide what you want to do with this. But nevertheless, that's how you make your axis titles. I'm going to click on the graph again here and now let's go back to customize. Now what we're going to do is a very important thing and that is we're going to add a tread line. Go here to series, go add a tread line. This is a linear tread line by default. Notice it doesn't fit the line as best as it could. So go here and pick out a type. In this case, polynomial seems to usually work better with curved lines. Pick out that polynomial line and leave it in there just like that. And now you have pretty much have your graph set just like this. What you're going to do now is we're going to paste your graph. So click on it, go up here to view, or I'm sorry, to uh, edit and copy and then go on to your Word file, and then you're just going to, whoops, I didn't have my table in there, and then you're going to paste it just like this. I'll paste it on late. This should work a lot easier where you can just basically size it. You can just size it and kind of get it to fit. But try to make sure you get everything to fit on this one page, and when you're done today, you're going to answer these questions, very similar to what we've done in the past. We'll do our best to help us out here, but anyways, that's Mr. McGee. Give it a try. We'll see you in a little bit.